We are back with Bunky. Uh, we're going to be looking at the last of the Retaliation Adepts now. We're going to be looking at the Batarian Slasher. I'm going to show you how to do something a little different with him. Uh, with a Lash build, okay? I'm going to show you how to use this power because I think a lot of people need this lesson. I really, really do. I'm going to expect you to build it this way, okay? Because the damage for Lash really ain't anything, okay? It's nothing special. This thing's great for getting your bombs going, okay? So go and detonate for the first evolution. And in the same respect, get yourself the recharge speed, okay? So you can do them as frequently as you need them to be. Uh, recharge speed is going to be actually very important in this build. The damage over time just really isn't that special. Uh, you know, it's it's another 230 damage over 10 seconds. I mean, if it's taking you 10 seconds to kill a single target, you're doing it wrong. Okay, guys, <laughs> just make sure you can lash more frequently. And then finally, okay, this is uh, really important, is shield penetration, okay? This is great because um, it does exactly what it says on the tin, okay, guys? You can penetrate shields and barriers and just sort of floor any target that's got protection on. Warp, okay, warp is fantastic, you know this, I'm also going to tell you to build it exactly the same way I normally do, slightly. Okay, go with uh, detonate, expose, and rather than uh, pierce, go with warp, recharge speed, sorry. Go with recharge speed. Uh, you're going to need it, guys, you are absolutely going to need the recharge speed. You need to be firing off these powers as quickly as possible. You can see now that my recharge speed on warp is still pushing three seconds, okay. Warp is not a spammy power, but we kind of need it to be. Uh, cluster grenades, okay, powerful as hell, but we are not the Drell Adept, okay? We're not the Drell Adept, we have not got Reeve, we are not priming a ton of targets in one single strike, we are priming one target per strike, so let's take that target out. This is how I recommend you go, uh, go with force and damage. Go with the damage combo. Okay, remember that uh, that 100% damage increase to already lifted targets is actually a 100% damage increase to biotically primed targets. Okay, uh, Bioware changed how this works, but forgot to change the description. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, that's the truth behind the damage combo. It's really powerful. That first. Um, shard, the first cluster that hits will be doing twice as much damage uh, to a biotically primed target and obviously warp gets them nice and soft. And then finally, go with force and damage again. Shrapnel's only good if you're detonating multiple targets, because with shrapnel you throw off three clusters and that means you can potentially get off three explosions. But we're only priming one target, so that's no good to us. We're better off just hitting that one target that we can prime really really hard look we're doing a thousand one hundred and eighty seven point five damage with these uh, grenades now and look at the force okay the force is strong <laughs> uh, for the battalion of force uh, if you haven't picked up on it yet guys this is a power build go with uh, damage and capacity power damage especially damage and capacity okay you want the recharge speed and then get yourself uh, three points in fitness okay guys because look um, battalions are tanky okay at least they should be it's got 1,050 health and shields. And it does say shields. I'm not tripping, right? That's not barriers, that says shields. <laughs> okay, now the weapon. I'm going to recommend something light and hard hitting. So I'm taking the Wraith. Okay, this is going to get the job done. Sick and the Smart Choke and the High Velocity Barrel on it. Those are the best mods for shotguns. At least vast majority of them. And remember, no added weight because it's not a DLC weapon. For the equipment, okay, get the warp rounds on, guys, okay, we're all about warp here. <laughs> we know we're about uh, priming and detonating explosions, so warp rounds are really going to be working some nice magic out there, really helping us destroy uh, armor and everything. <laughs> uh, I do recommend that you take a power amp, but uh, I was low at the time, I'm pretty low now, as you can see, so I took a cyclonic modulator for this game. Because that is a 150% increase with Cyclonic Major 4 to my 100, well, my 1,050 shields. Okay, good stuff there. It's not a. This is a lash build. Like I said, it's not grenade focused. We're not doing. We're not being the Drill Adept. We're not the Drill Adept. So I'm not going to be about spamming grenades. I'm going to take the Shock Trooper upgrade. So I've got extra grenades, but I want to do some more weapon damage. And obviously with the weapon bonus, and I'm going to be taking the Shotgun Rail Amp. Or more weapon damage, of course. Uh, I think I only had a shotgun real amp two for the gameplay, but I got threes to show you now. That's what you want. Okay, guys, let's jump into the gameplay, show you how this works. Alright, so it's uh, me and Myths uh, with two uh, pugs doing an unknown Cerberus gold. Uh, 
there's just been a whole lot of reapers and collectors. Uh, I'm getting an unknown unknown, and I'm sick of showing you those same gameplays. I'm kind of guessing you might guys might be sick of seeing those two enemies. So I've gone ahead and made sure there's a Cerberus gameplay for you now. Um, I'm also playing with Myth, which you probably haven't seen for a while. I don't know what happened to the guy. I think he got stoned and wandered off. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you just haven't seen him for a while, but he's back with us now. I'm going to have him in a couple of games with us. And um, I believe we're going to get Hazard Ghost for the gameplay. So, um, but yeah, Hazard Ghost against Cerberus. Uh, they're going to be fucking annoying. They really are going to be so annoying in this game. I find myself having very few fun games uh, against Cerberus these days. Uh, which is not the reason why there hasn't been as many on my channel. Uh, it's just not. I, I get them rather rarely in an unknown, unknown uh, situation for some reason. Uh, I don't know, just something that happens. Um, no, there's a lot of... There's a lot to hate about about them nowadays. There really is. I, 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 and I find them coming at me at full force all of the time. Service just seems to swarm me in particular. Me. <laughs> me. They go for me. Uh, no matter where or who or uh, or who with or how I play them, okay? I just get swarmed by Cerberus all the time. Um, it's, it's really annoying. I mean, I do host a lot. I'm sure that helps. But even off host. Oh, oh my god. It's even worse then because I'm not connecting them with them as uh, as well as I as I can when I'm hosting. Um, a lot of the ways they operate now are just so cheap. It's particularly frustrating when they down me as opposed to like the other factions. You know, ignoring Geth. <laughs> They're still the most annoying, absolutely. But these guys, are, they're really pushing it for me. They really are. I'll, I'll get more into it later because you're going to see it. You in this gameplay, they are going to uh, give me a hard time. Um, but now let's focus, okay? The Batarian Slasher. <laughs> okay. The ugly fucking Drell who's not as good. <laughs> That's the reality as far as I'm concerned. Well... As a member of a different race, he alters the kit with his own unique traits. You know, simply put, the Drell does more damage, but the Batarian has more life. That's what you can do. What I'm saying here is you could... He's got a primer, and he's got cluster grenades, and he's an adept. And then he's got one move, which is quite negligible if you opt to. So he really is just a kind of a carbon copy of the Drell adept. You can absolutely play him just like the Drell adept. Um... But no, if you want something different out of this different character, you're really forced to explore the Lash ability. Okay, that, uh, that ability I told you, which is kind of easy to ignore. Um, Lash is a stupid power. It really is. It is so stupid. I hate it when someone on my team has this power because nine times out of ten, they're a pleb with it. <laughs> but it's hard not to look like a div with such a duh power. I mean, look at it. What is it doing and why is it doing that? When that flaccid strip of space magic string attaches itself to an enemy, it's anybody's guess where they go next. You can position your reticle anywhere on the enemy to sort of angle the attack appropriately, so you can sort of get them over cover or around, uh, you know, columns and stuff like that. But that's where the logic starts and finishes. The force behind the power is quite literally out of control. In theory, you can lash an enemy from above and hurtle them skyward like a rocket, having them crash back down to Earth or whatever planet you're battling on to a special brand of crushing death. However, in reality, the name Lash and the accompanying animation is just a suggestion. You will infrequently pull the enemy in exchange for just sending them any fucking direction there is space for them to go. Um, after you lash a target, it becomes a witch hunt for their body. <laughs> this is particularly annoying for a teammate with far more competent powers who could have initially dealt with the said enemy with much more confidence and gusto, but instead had some jackass snatch it from him for a game of go fetch. If you opt to be that jackass, make sure your follow-up act is a damn sight more clever. Okay, Lash has some positive aspects when used correctly. Uh, and it's uh, it's tricky to use it correctly. That's the sad reality. If both 
It both primes and detonates, and you can strike quickly and frequently with it. As a detonator, it's fantastic. You can spam it much like throw, although it will be a fi avoided far more frequently. It's so much easier for the enemy to avoid this power. However, the kits with worth using it on have great crowd control options. Okay, The Phoenix Adept can prime and detonate several explosions in an instant with Singularity and Lash. Okay? This is also because Lash goes through shields and barriers, which you need not spec for the shield penetration to do how to do. Okay, you don't need that evolution to detonate through shields. However, when you do take shield penetration, you get you got yourself a fantastic primer like this. I hope you spotted what I'm doing here, okay? Um with shield penetration you can prime and floor everything and then blow it up before it gets its footing this combination of damage and force damage uh, that's the damage taken from smashing into things which happens when you're using like biotics and stuff you see that you knock the enemy back or send them flying and stuff and they'll hit walls and floors and ceilings and stuff they take damage when that happens if there's enough force behind that crash um you know that is enough to kill all non-bosses or at least leave them with one shot's worth of health which you can take while they're still getting up um with the right team, like a good biotic team, or even uh, you know if you've got sort of fire and cryo stuff going out there, uh, you can detonate one bomb with Lash, floor the enemy, out, so that they'll blow up as soon as Lash attaches, and then you fling them to the ground. They take some force damage then, and then you throw warp at them and instantly bomb them again. That will kill all non bosses for sure, absolutely. Um, but what you need to, this is why it's so important that we had all that recharge speed, guys. Uh, because even though it is great for priming, because you can go through shields and floor shielded and protected enemies and stuff, that window of opportunity to detonate them is so very small. You, when you, after you've lashed that target, you best find that body fast because it it thinks like a second you've got to hit them with warp and get the explosion. But you get that explosion on and you will pretty much kill everything. Of course, you can't lash armored targets, which means you can't prime or detonate them either, okay? Um, that's where the cluster grenades come in. There is so much force and damage behind this spec for cluster grenades, okay? That warp and cluster grenade combo just wrecks the bosses and anything too close to it, okay? Because obviously there's a radius to any explosion. Um, and this, the radius on this one's particularly hefty. Uh, the force is coming come off it. Unlike the Drell, you can only prime one target at a time, because that's why that's why the Drell Adept's amazing, okay? Cluster grenades detonate so many targets, and Reeve primes so many targets, so he just walks into a room and he cleans it out. This guy's got warp, so he can only prime the one target. Uh, so it makes sense to sort of have this single strike focus, okay? We've got all that damage and force, damage and force, damage combo, okay? This, it is all about hitting that one particular big enemy hard. It's easy to hit an Atlas and a Brute and stuff like that because, you you know, cluster grenades can be tricky, but you just want to pelt those in its face. You've only got two of these things flying out at a time and they're going to hit hard. The first shard that hits is always doing double damage as well. You're doing a lot of damage to bosses. This build of the Slasher then has a method of... Um, dealing with whatever the game can throw at him, which is what makes him a good character, okay? This this build does kind of make him a really good character, although you can do the Drell Adept thing and he's still a good character, he's just, you know, he's not as good as the Drell Adept, that is, just a simple uh, fact of it. I mean, Warp is one hell of a primer, and Damage Combo is one, well, one hell of a way to set it off. So, you know, you can really wreck bosses, and we've got a great way of dealing with any kind of mook enemy. I mean, obviously, there's the little armored targets. You can't lash them, but you can just warp and shoot them. That's why I recommend the warp ammo in the build section of the video. But, uh, you know, let me get into some of the uh, weapon choices and equipment choices for you, okay? I'm rocking the Wraith, because it's light and it hits hard. That's why I would also recommend the Piranha. Okay, the Piranha is really good. Don't forget that you are a Batarian, so you do get a little bit of extra ammo uh, on your guns and stuff. The Talon's good as well, okay, that's kind of hitting exactly the same way as the Wraith, and it's also going to help you with shields. That's the, um, actually attacking shields with your gun is where we fall back. So things like the Atlas, who's got massive ass shields, huge, huge, huge shields. It's quite, you've got, you've got to kind of work them down before you can really start doing your whole cluster and warp combo, okay. So, you know, the Talon would be good, because it's got the uh, extra multiplier that's damage, and plus you can rock the power magnifier on that then as well. And, you know. 
do more power damage. Uh, the Executioner Pistol, okay, uh, this would be a great opportunity to rock the Executioner Pistol because then obviously whenever you're not bombing, you're hitting that boss hard because there's a lot of armor damage. You don't really need to worry about shields for the most part. It is literally only situations like this Atlas here who's got chunky ass shields. I mean, barriers aren't a problem, so don't worry about collectors, bosses, and banshee bosses. You can go ahead and do the whole... Uh, warp and cluster grenade them in, for the whole battle and they will just get wrecked geth primes their shields aren't as big so you know you can get through them much quicker it's literally the atlas is the worst case scenario as far as uh, stripping shields before you can start bombing goes uh, so you know you really don't need to worry about shields for the most part because you can uh, bomb all the little shielded targets with lash and stuff so yeah execution pistol would be awesome on this guy so obviously you can go with the SMGs because you want to stay light and you can get the power magnifier with them too, okay? So Hurricane, collect for SMGs, good, because we are spamming powers. And even the Blood Pack Punisher in the same respect as the Executioner Pistol, okay, guys? Because, you know, like I said, shields aren't a major worry. It really is only the Atlas's shields uh, that gets in your way. Now, I'm going with the warp ammo, okay, because everything's getting primed and blown up and all this kind of good stuff. So warp, or the magic of warp where you get to do 100% more weapon damage to a particularly prime target is definitely great. Um, incendiary would be the other choice, though, okay, guys, because then you, other than just do a lot of more weapon damage, you get to do two more bombs. Well, you get one more bomb and you get additional damage. So, yeah, incendiary's great. Incendiary's great on all biotics. Incendiary's great on everybody, but it's really good on biotics because they've got bombs going, they've got something to detonate with, uh, so you can obviously just mix fire and biotic explosions in and kill everything. Uh, <laughs> now, I got the Cyclonic on this guy because uh, I was low on power ramps. Cyclonic is still a good choice, though, guys, uh, especially, as you can see in this game, I am getting wrecked. I am absolutely being destroyed. I got, I've got over 2,000 shields here, and you... You'd think I had no fitness. It, the, they're doing so much damage to me. It's uh, crazy. This is what I just kept from Cerberus. Uh, I really do. So Cyclonic does help. Um, it is still only three points of fitness, even though they're, they're a good three points. Uh, but I do recommend the power up mostly, because you you'll see the bosses disappear if you've got a power amplifier on. Trust me. Um, but power efficiency uh, could uh, is an all right choice if you have opted for a heavier weapon. I mean. In, with the weapons and stuff, like I've said multiple times in the video, you can go ahead and do the whole Drell Adept thing. And, you know, if you want to know the best weapon choices to go and do that, watch my Drell Adept video. Okay, just literally just build in the same. Obviously, I put three points in pull for him. You might want to put three points in lash, but honestly, if you want to do the Drell Adept thing, just spec out a lash entirely and get full fitness. Or, or weapon damage, I think, rather I spec out of. Uh, so, yeah, you can do that, and you can use the same weapons. Go ahead, uh, you can, especially something like the Harrier and stuff like that on him where you've got the extra ammo. You take advantage of that aspect of being a Batarian. Um, but no, I don't recommend heavy weapons for this build that I'm showing you now. But if you did go with something slightly heavier, maybe like a Geth Plasma Shotgun or a Growl Spike Throw or something like that, you might want to go with the Power Efficiency mod for your armor bonus. Now for the gears, I am rocking the Shock Trooper upgrade, just so I've got my extra grenades and I'm doing some nice weapon damage as well. You can go with something like the Assault Loadout, so you've got the extra weapon damage and you've got the extra thermal clip, so you can get your grenades that way as well. You can go with grenade capacity if you want to do a lot more uh, just bombing like that with the warp and cluster grenades, you can do that. I mean, that combo is good for a, a large group of enemies as well, rather than just bosses. Because, uh, you know, if you, there's a load of enemies in it, you only need to really blow up one of them, and the force and stuff is going to get the rest of the group. So, small maps and stuff like that, the cluster, grenade capacity is good, it's good to have that focus. But you can go, you can just focus more on weapon and power damage as well, although I would recommend that you have at least four grenades. I do. Uh, but you can. You can go with, like, a commando package, get the biotic and pistol damage. If you did go for the pistol option, even just go with the adaptive war ramp and get the biotic damage there. Mental focuser, power damage. Okay, guys? There's structural ergonomics, too, as well. So you can get the power recharge here and take, like, a cyclonic modulator or a power ramp as well. So you can get the recharge speed and the extra whatever you need, guys. But then you can always take the sealed options in the gear options, too. Get the kind of uh, shield recharging or shield strength that you, need, you think you need uh, for this guy. Right. That's that's all the facts, uh, and uh, the gameplay is still rolling along now, so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Just sort of lash and bomb with warp, and if a boss reels his big ugly head, he gets warped and he gets cluster grenaded, and I bomb them, okay? Um, but right now, back to why I hate Cerberus these days, because uh, I really am getting kind of sick of this faction. It is... 
it's just so horrible. It's just a horrible imbalance within the faction. I find there's a really bad imbalance, and the cheap, superficial difficulty that's been added to them over the year. Okay, they're all with all the updates they've had. Every faction's had its buffs and its nerves and stuff. Cerberus has had a lot of buffs. They were the easiest faction for the longest time. Uh, nowadays, it's Reapers. Reapers are the easiest faction to fight. Uh, but now Cerberus are just a... For me, anyway, okay? This is, oh, anything I tell you now, guys, you need to understand is, is largely my opinion. I'll give you the facts, absolutely, but uh, it's a lot of it's my opinion. And I do really dislike uh, Cerberus these days. I just find them really fucking annoying. Phantoms, in particular, okay? Phantoms are cool, but they are so annoying. Um... They're the only sub-boss that completely outperforms the boss of the faction. I mean, look at look what else we're dealing with. The Brute does not outperform the Banshee. I mean, the Banshee's not a great boss. I think the only thing she's really got going for her is the fact that she can just fly through the wall and take you out of the game in an instant. Really cheap. Um, but the Brute's really not a threat, uh, for the most part. And then, you know, the Scion, they're a bitch, but they don't outperform the Praetorian, do they? And, you know, the Geth Prime. Uh, nothing comes close to the Geth Prime in the Geth, <laughs> in the Geth faction, okay? Uh, but the Phantom just is so much better than the Atlas, okay? Uh, they can cartwheel to ignore all the damage they fucking want. I mean, as the host with the strongest connection to the game, you face all the damage reduction she has to offer. And she will she will take, like, ten times the damage of an Atlas with like the, with an inefficient combination for taking her on. Um, I, mean, if you re I mean, there's plenty of ways to deal with Phantoms. Uh, you know, as soon as you take a Phantom off her footing, she is super easy to kill. There's plenty really easy ways to kill a Phantom, but if you're not rocking that... Uh, She's just hell. She is just hell. She really is. She can just dance circles around you and just eat all this weapon damage and all this power damage. She is uh, insanely broken. <laughs> she really, really is. I mean, oh, and that hand cannon. Oh my fucking god. That thing is ridiculous. It is meant to be her fallback option. The, the thing she does when you're out of range or she's under pressure from her main attack. You know, that one that slices everybody up in about two or three strikes or takes them out of the gaming completely? That intergalactic bitch slap destroys you. It has pinpoint accuracy, like infinite range and an incredible rate of fire. And she can do it while dancing. Okay, she'll just dance circles around you, just pew, pew, pew in, and you're down in an instant. It's, it's so over quick. Um, it, it's, it hits as hard as the Atlas. It really t seems that way. Um, why on earth we are chasing Reaper Tech? I don't know. Let's just mass produce whatever she has in her fucking terrorist. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's super overpowered. They call it the Phase Disrupt, I think you'll find on like Mass Effect Wiki. Uh, Dom brought up to me. I wish the Slayer's Phase Disruptor was anything like what the Phantom's got firing out of her hand there. <laughs> it's so, she is broken, okay? Um, she is so overpowered. It's not even funny. She needs some cutbacks so the rest of Cerberus can do something. Like all the little trooper enemies, the, the Cerberus trooper and the, um, the Centaurian, and even the Guardian, okay? They do pitiful damage. They literally, they've got to outnumber you or they've got to surround you, outnumber you or catch you completely off guard to really kill you. Uh, you know, if she just, had, if she lost some of the immense damage that she does in everything she does, and that was sort of distributed between the rest of the faction, I think there'd be more balance, and it, it, you wouldn't get frustrated with one enemy, uh, you would just be challenged by the faction as a whole. Uh, it, it, they just do, she, she needs cutbacks, and a lot of the other troopers just need a buff, uh, that's, I, I genuinely believe that. But then, of course, uh, there is the actual boss of the faction, okay? <laughs> he's annoying too, okay? The, the actual Cerberus boss is... He is so fucking cheap. Uh, to attach a completely unavoidable attack onto anything is a is a dick move, okay? Let alone have it have said attack continue to do damage over time after it found you deep within a complex on the other side of the map. That... You you have to, if, especially if you're the host. If you're the host, you absolutely, 100%, have to find hard cover to avoid the Atlas missile. It will get you, no matter where you are or what's in between you and the Atlas. It finds you, it hits you, it hits you hard, and then it does burning damage, and quite a bit of burning damage. It can, it's, it's too strong 
to work that way. Uh, it, it's just so annoyingly cheap for me, it, it, I, and I just hate it. I, I can be doing my own thing with different enemies on some of the part of the map, and out of nowhere, I'm just hit in the back of the head by some Atlas missile, and then I'll turn to find the Atlas, and he's nowhere to be seen. He's literally on the other side of the map. He just seems to have got, like, must have slit of me and just fires this missile, and it finds me. Uh, it's annoying. It's, uh, it always feels dirty when the Atlas touches you. <laughs> and then the Dragoons ruin Cerberus, okay? At least the Geth Bombers had the decency to stick with the trend, <laughs> okay? They're the, 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 the Dragoons are, just feel they're unfinished and bugging like a glitch, okay? They'll ignore the mechanics of the game when they see fit, okay? Whenever they feel like attacking, whipping, jumping at you, you won't stagger them, you won't stun them, you won't prime them, they, they just go for you, and it's it's stupid, that's not, no one else gets to do that but the Dragoons for some reason, they just, that's what I mean, and they butt rush you like they're an enemy from the wrong faction, <laughs> you know? They strike hard, fast, and repeatedly in complete silence, like the penises they have attached to their arms. Dragoons are dicks, <laughs> and they fuck things up. I, I really, they're the worst thing that ever happened to Cerberus. They just don't play like a Cerberus enemy, and they, they just play like an annoying enemy. I absolutely hate this. I don't think anyone likes the Dragoons. They're completely silent. It's, they, they hit really hard. Okay, they're super hornets. Uh, just gun you down in a second. Uh, eat the tankiest of enemies, they'll gun down in a second. And their melee attacks are, you know, understandably powerful. But the thing is, they just fly in without making a sound. And you, so you've got no real opportunity to react, apart from if you survived their initial attack or you spot them coming. Uh, no enemy that does a lot of damage should be completely silent. I don't, that's, why I don't, that's why I hate the pyros and stuff as well, but the dragoons are ridiculous, because at least the pyros are slow, and you've got plenty of opportunity to just look around. I mean, if a, in all honesty, if a pyro catches you off guard, it's because you weren't keeping your awareness up. But a, a dragoon can fly in so fast out of nowhere, and you know, if you, it's hard to survive that situation. They are an annoying, cheap, badly constructed enemy. They, they don't have, they have no place in Cerberus. Definitely, they would be better for the collectors, but they would still be annoying. <laughs> they would, they'd still be annoying. And then of also there's so many engineers now that being gunned down by the third turret after killing the other two is just commonplace now. It's just, I, that's that's a frequent death on any sort of open map with Cerberus. When you're dealing with so many aspects this frustrating, it's hard to convince yourself you're having fun. Yeah, it really is. It, it's difficult to, it is difficult to challenge someone with, without simply frustrating them. I suppose the balance is within the reward at the end, okay? But since the reward most of the time in this game is cryo rounds and another battle against Cerberus, the challenge doesn't really pay off. Uh, and they have just been annoying the crap out of me uh, recently. I mean, I've taken some hefty blows uh, this game. I really have. And I just do, generally do now with Cerberus. I, I generally do. And this, what you're seeing now is a Batarian Slasher with over a thousand shields and health with a Cyclonic 4 being beaten down in an instant. Uh, it's just so fast. It's just fortunate that I can give as, much, as good as I get, really. I just... I, I, I just I, I'm, I'm raging like all the time when I'm playing against Cerberus. With, with, there's, a, there's, a, there's obviously there's certain characters which absolutely just demolish them. Uh, it's like easy, easy mode, and it's essentially if you can do a lot of staggering. Uh, you know, if you can stagger. I, I mean, look at that. Another silent dragoon just flew in from nowhere and just smashed me up. So I'm actually just going to hide. <laughs> I'm just going to hide here at LZ and try and. Get extraction, okay? Because I hate, I really don't like Cerberus anymore. I, 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 you, you really got to be paying, playing very specific characters to take on Cerberus, which I suppose it has its merits. I suppose. I mean, it's it's nice that we've got. Um, I mean, it they, they should really. The, the whole point in having uh, different enemy factions is because they force you to play the game in a different way. Uh, 
but they shouldn't frustrate you if you didn't. You shouldn't be wound up by making the wrong choice, especially when, you know, unknown, unknown, I'm pretty sure is the most popular choice in this game, just because you do whatever you can to find variety in this game. Uh, which is why I've shown you a lash build for the Batarian Slasher, okay? This is why I play a lash build with the Batarian Slasher. It's, um, it needs to be done otherwise, because no, I wouldn't have played him otherwise. He was one of the last characters I built, because, you know, I, I, from, I just looked at him as I going, yeah, he's just a sort of inefficient drill with more health. There's a lot of that in Retaliation, a lot of carbon copies. Uh, but no, he has got Lash. If you rock that, you're going to get yourself something nice and different there. But uh, besides some ranting, I hope you learned something new here, guys. <laughs> Please comment, rate, and subscribe if you did. Who's fighting rockets blasting off again?